Good morning, MCHS. You're watching MCTV News. I'm your host, Dominic Foss. And I'm Jasmine King. On today's show, we'll be, looking, we'll be taking a look at the final Grade 9 pieces from last semester, including a look at the flood in the library, the Grade 9 boys' basketball tryouts, and Christmas fashions at MCHS. But first, our top story. Just in time for parent-teacher interviews on Thursday, March 5th, here's a look back at the last round of conferences held in November. If you're lucky enough to never have attended one, reporters Mark Jessen and Liam Winfield are here to tell you what it's all about. These are the parent-teacher interviews. What exactly are Interview. they? Okay. We asked you're Principal Eistutter about his right point there. of view on the parent-teacher interviews. Parent-teacher interviews are an opportunity for parents to speak one-on-one -on -one with teachers to find out exactly what's going on uh, with their child, get any questions that they may have uh, answered, find out if there's anything that they need to do to try and improve what's going on. To obtain further information on what the parents want to know about their children during these parent-teacher interviews, we talked to teachers Mr. Wisnowski and Mr. Denham about their experience of parent-teacher interviews. Uh, they usually want to know how they're progressing and if they're working really hard, or if, and if they're keeping up with homework and classwork. Uh, generally, I just want to know how their student is doing, uh, how, they, how their kid is doing. Uh, they usually ask about the mark and their average and, and how they're uh, uh, behaving in school. We also asked Principal Eistotter on why the parents want to know how good their children are doing. Well, it really helps if parents know exactly what's going on. And then they can reinforce things with students, they can uh, uh, work with the uh, teacher better if they know exactly what's going on. The parent-teacher interviews are an informal event for both parents, teachers, and students alike. This is Mark Justin for MCTV News reporting. Welcome back. This October, MCHS students have the opportunity to travel to the New York and Boston areas. We are very pleased to have organizer Mrs. Deborah YQ here in the studio to talk about this great excursion. Thank you for joining us. So, obviously, Boston and New York, great trip. So, when and how long is this great opportunity? So, we'll be leaving on October 8th, and we're back on the 13th of October, so that's six days and five nights yep. of excitement and fun. Sounds like a great time. So uh, what tour company are you guys using? We're traveling with Explorica this time. Uh, Explore, we've traveled with them before to other countries in the world and uh, they're very experienced. They're an yep. excellent company and um, yeah, they're providing us with a tour guide. So we'll have our own exclusive guide with us the whole time and, and take us far and wide. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, why did you guys choose Thanksgiving over spring break? Well, we took Thanksgiving. It was a few shorter, a little bit less time, but the foliage, the autumn season, yeah. is absolutely beautiful then, right? The leaves, the, the trees, everything there is very different from here. Yeah. And so we thought we'd take in that experience. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. So what are you guys looking to uh, see when you're at Boston, New York? Well, our itinerary is very, very full, so we've got uh, lots of things. We start in Boston, so we're taking a look at, we're going to be climbing the Prudential sky, uh, scraper, uh, Skywalk, where we'll be able to see the whole city of Boston and the East Coast, the ocean. Uh, we travel to Salem, Massachusetts, so we're going to be taking in the Salem Witch Museum there and the Boston Tea Party Museum. Um, we'll be traveling to from there to uh, New York uh, by, by coach so we're having a very nice luxurious bus it's not just a school bus yeah. um, while there we'll be taking in Times Square we'll be going to Central's uh, uh, Square for t walking tours uh, we'll be taking in Rockefeller Center Madison Square Gardens uh, the Empire State Building Central Park American Museum of Natural History, the movie, yep. right? Uh, the Metropolitan Museum, the Museum of Modern Art. Um, 
we're taking in a Broadway show, you name it, it's there. It's amazing. The kids will be really, really busy. Sounds like a great, fun time. It will be. It'll be fun and jam-packed. Yeah. And uh, what is the cost that students can expect to pay? Well, at this time, it's $2,415, so $2,415. Um, if they register early, there's a little bit of a bonus, but the, we're, it's a tentative trip. We're waiting on approval from the school board. So once that approval is made, then we'll go with that. And okay. do students need any kind of uh, travel insurance? Travel insurance is mandatory. We have to have travel insurance anytime you leave the country. We want to make sure that there is travel insurance in case something should happen. We've never had to use it, but it's always safer than sorry. All right. So. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to chat with us today, Mrs. YQ, and good luck with all the trip preparations. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay. Coming up before Jasmine brings us our seven-day weather forecast, reporters Spencer Hayduke and Dan McIntyre were on the scene the first day back from Christmas holidays when an open window in room 202 led to a pipe freezing and bursting, sending water into the library. Here's the report. To the school after Christmas break, Librarian Arlene Zyler was shocked to discover a layer of water over the library floor. We got an exclusive interview with her to discover exactly what had happened. Here's what she said. I was quite shocked and I thought it's raining in the library. <laughs> we actually got very lucky. Um, the uh, furniture, our brand new furniture that we just got this year, nothing was destroyed at all. Nothing got touched and uh, believe it or not, we had very, very few uh, items that got hit. We uh, had a couple of stacks, uh, boxes of novel sets, and that's about it. The library, although it came down in about 12 different places from the ceiling, uh, God loves libraries because he didn't hit any of my books. The leakage in the library was caused by a window being left open during the break. Luckily, no damage was done to anything other than the carpet and a few books. For MCTV News, this is Spencer Haydick reporting. Welcome back to our weather report. So here's our national forecast. Right now it's minus three in St. John's with some sun and clouds. Halifax minus five. Montreal minus 13, sun and clouds. Toronto we have minus 10 with some snow. Winnipeg's a nice minus 15, sunny. Regina minus 17, sunny weather. Vancouver is a rain, minus 10. Whitehorse is uh, snowing, minus 2, and Yellowknife is minus 18, snow, sun and clouds and some snow, and Callowit is minus 28 with some sun and clouds. And now our Alberta forecast. So right now in uh, Medicine Hat, it's minus 7, very sunny there. Uh, Calgary is minus 6, some snow forecast. Banff is minus 4, sun and clouds with some snow. Red Deer is minus 7, Jasper is minus 1 with some snow, Grand Prairie minus 9, sun and clouds, high level minus 9, snow, Fort McMurray minus 9, sun, and here in Edmonton it's minus 9 with some sun and clouds. And our current conditions? It is currently minus 17 with the we have a wind of about 6 kilometers, and sunrise is, uh, was at 7.31 a.m. today, and sunset was at 6.04 today. And our seven-day forecast, it's looking pretty good this week. Going to be kind of cold, but at least we have some sun. And that's our weather. Back to you, Dominic. Thanks for that, Jasmine. Back in December, grade 9 reporters Luke Zacharias and Devin Morrison went to talk to the students and faculty around the school to see what fashion trends were making the rounds during the 2014 Christmas season. Here at MCHS celebrating the Christmas season and it appears everybody's wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. Uh, well ugly Christmas sweater day I mean as the name implies you wear an ugly Christmas sweater and I think it just kind of grew out of the fact that uh, you know ugly Christmas sweaters have become chic again. I love Christmas sweater day yes I selected this sweater from a kiosk in Northgate Mall this year they have an ugly Christmas sweater kiosk. You know, if you want a really ugly Christmas sweater, I guess you could wear an Edmonton Oilers ugly Christmas sweater. That's really ugly. <clears throat> well, I, I, I think my favorite always, you know, you got to go with the traditional Santa hat. You know, the Santa hat is, uh, 
is kind of a perennial favorite of mine. Uh, you know, especially you know with my with my head. Um, I think they just wanted to spread like cheer and things, so they just made the hat so they can feel happy. One of the questions we asked when we were interviewing was, where did the Santa hat originate from? Santa Claus? We think it's from Santa Claus. He lives at the North Pole, man. Like, you need fur and a really warm hat, man. Like, what was he going to wear, white? Imagine the elves trying to find him if he wore nothing but white. He's got to wear a bright color so they can catch him on the snow line. I mean, come on, like... And let's and, and you went neon yellow had already been taken by the eighties, so he decided I'm gonna wear red. And that's I think how red came about as Santa Claus's outfit. And that's a scoop on Ugly Sweater Day, where students and teachers seem to enjoy dressing up in unusually ugly Christmas sweaters. For MCGV News, this is Luke Zacharias reporting. Here are your MCHS announcements for Thursday, February twenty sixth. Parent-teacher interviews will be held a week from today on Thursday, March 12th from 5 to 8 in the MCHS gym. Take this opportunity to meet with teachers about progress in various classes. The first meeting for the 24th annual Roger Champagne Memorial Bike Trip will be held on Monday, March 2nd at lunch in the Media Lab. If you are interested in cycling from Lake Louise to Jasper this May, be sure to attend or contact Mr. Radestein for more details. Want to go to Boston and New York this October? Contact Ms. Waikyu in room 109 to get registration forms and more info about this amazing opportunity. MCHS Open House will be held on Thursday, March 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. Take this opportunity to see all that the programs at Morneville Community High School has to offer. All are welcome. Miss any MCTV news episodes this year? Log on to www.battestein.net to see our digital archive, which includes episodes from the last 21 seasons. Get your fill of MCHS news, weather, and sports. Stay connected with all the events at MCHS by logging on to the school's website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, following us on Twitter at MCHS Wolves, or by searching the hashtags MCHS or MCTV News. And now, a quick look at MCHS sports. The MCHS cheer team was in competition in Red Deer. They had great performances and placed first in the small varsity category, achieving their highest scores yet. Our curling teams were also in action this weekend, with the girls placing second, losing in the gold medal match to Westlock, and the mixed team placed fourth, losing in the bronze medal match against Slave Lake. The senior basketball teams were at the East Glen tournament. The boys played well but struggled in the win category, only beating Beaver Lodge in their final match. The girls secured a first place standing in the zone by beating Parkland Emanuel Christian Academy in the final to win the entire tournament. The grade, nine, the grade 8 and 9 basketball teams hosted their home tournament on the weekend, with the girls taking home the bronze medal, beating Devon 66-31. The boys took silver, losing by 26 in the finals against Greystone from Stony Plain, due to three starters being out of the lineup. Speaking of grade 8 and 9 boys basketball, here's a piece done by Matt Hahn and Dawson Arkand about the team at the start of this season. In the beginning of basketball season, we went to watch and cover the grade 9 boys basketball team, and we asked them how their season has gone so far. It's been pretty good. We won our first game. I think we've maybe lost a little more games than we've won, but it's been pretty good so far. I think our season's gone pretty well so far. You know, we already have a have a couple of wins under our belt from that tournament and from our uh, exhibition games. So, yeah, I think it's going pretty well. We're uh, working really well as a team. Uh, I think we've worked really hard. Uh, we had some pretty good results and we're competitive all the time. So I th I'm actually quite proud of the success that we've had so far. We also asked them why they like playing basketball. Yes, getting some exercise. We get to know some other, some other people in the school. I just think the sport's fun to play, too. I love playing basketball because it's a very fast-paced sport, and you get to know a lot of your teammates very well. And, um, yeah, I just love it because you get to be able to, like, run as far as you want while as long as you're in the court. And you just have to get to have a lot of fun with all your teammates. And we asked Mr. Denham, does he like coaching boys basketball? I, I do. I like seeing the growth in the players on the basketball court as well as just learning to become men in life. 
and we asked them what do they expect their team to accomplish this year. I think this year will probably be able to win against some of the St. Albert teams, maybe most of them. Well, they make zones this year too, hopefully. I think our team's going to accomplish a lot of stuff. Like, uh, I think that we can eventually, uh, by the end of the season, we will be able to take down more Nakins and more of the big teams out there. Even though a lot of our team is like, I'm not trying to sound rude here, but they're short like me. Uh, I think that we can. We have some pretty tall players out there. I think we'll take down some of the bigger teams. I expect us to compete in every game and to learn lots so that we can go on and contribute to the senior high program. The grade 9 boys basketball team play their first regular season game tomorrow in Lorne Aikens. They also have a tournament this weekend in various St. Albert schools. For MCTV News, this is Matt Hahn reporting. And that's our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join myself and host Ryan Beach for our next broadcast on Thursday, March the 5th. Reports will include a behind-the-scenes look at the perks of being in the MCHS band program, an inside look at the cosmetology course, we'll chat with Mrs. Boucher about the French as a second language class, and we'll have the story of ex-MCHS drama student Rory Turner and his success at Grant McEwen. All this plus sports and your seven-day MCTV weather forecast next Thursday. For all of us here at MCTV News, thanks for tuning in today. I'm Jasmine King. And I'm Dominic Foss. Have a good afternoon, MCHS.